So thank you very much for being part of this ethical storytelling project. And I think I would like to start off by you just telling me a little bit about your background. So I'm Michelle Lunanga. I was born in, in Bukavu and I grew up in Goma. We moved when I was two. I've been uh, doing photography uh, for now past for the past eight years and um, and I use uh, I use my art to like change or to impact people's life or to be a change in the community or to bring something positive and based on what I and based on the initiative um, I created, uh, which promotes uh, arts, ecology, uh, in order to raise awareness to people and to use art to, to help people travel Congo. So I'm really trying to write a different story uh, that, that could be different from what uh, people have put on the internet, yeah. So writing our own story by a Congolese person, that's what I'm trying to do. I've just seen a little bit of your work and I think it's amazing and it truly is impacting people's lives, really. I want to know, how did you get into photography? What was the thing that, that led you to hold a camera? I've been experiencing a lot of things actually, like, when I was kids, I was, I was just doing photos just for, for the sake of having fun. But uh, there was a message behind it, through what my family and what we, what was going on here in in Congo. I was really end up being depressed, and to use being depressed and to really. Um, always be myself when it comes to problem issues when i was seeing my mom struggling i usually go in the nature i used to go in the nature to to sit thinking i was i was like i don't know how can i uh, how can i keep this uh, story alive how can i stay how can i show this one day because i know there is there is a change that will happen someday and which will need, which will be replaced by something else, which is positive, so. You started building your own story. You wanted to preserve your story so you'd be able to tell your story later. Yes. So because I was thinking a lot, my father gave me a name called Fikiri, which means thinking because I was always thinking too much without uh, without doing anything, so my mom wouldn't wouldn't want that. Okay. Uh, and she said, and she said, instead of it, instead of calling him uh, Ushindi, it's good to call him um, Victory because when I when I was born, uh, there are so many things that happen, and and my father told it like. It's like a curse, <laughs> but uh, because when I was born, he got chased from the work, but also he he used to not do something that was right. But my, my mom was like, OK, this could be a victory because she couldn't understand why it happened, why uh, my father was chased uh, when I was born. That's why they call me Ushindi. So Ushindi is like is the translation of victory. After that, they got divorced and my father decided to leave to go to Kinshasa to do another life, which he never came back. And I didn't know about him until until I, I became a man. So my mom helped me really. She did a lot of things. She taught me how to fight. She taught me how to look for money. She could do anything to let us believe that things could happen. That's why she gave me the name Ushindi because she thought I will be the victory in everything I do. 
so we moved to to Goma and started building a new house. And then she was doing a part-time job. She she's a nurse, so then she was doing a part-time job, and which could help us have something to eat and this and each day and to go to school, uh, which wasn't easy. So she really fought to have like three times. Uh, I mean three jobs at the time in order like to sell other things but to be a nurse because uh being a nurse in congo you don't really it doesn't really give a lot of money since it's a government thing so she was doing all of those stuff and here we are we're now doing our own thing and she's really proud of of us and you can see I, I am the last born, but I'm also doing something which is, which she's always proud when she see us. That's so inspirational. You have one strong mom. Yeah, I'm just telling you the whole story so that uh, yes. after that you can you can ask other questions. No, it's it's nice that we I get to hear your story as well. It's amazing, and uh, so for. A lot of people don't really know what it is like in the east of Congo to live and in, to work in such an environment. Can you also explain the environment in the east, what's currently happening and what's happened in the last couple of years, the environment you're working in? The thing is, when the, the volcano erupted in 2002, we destroyed uh, the city of Goma. We end up being refugees after moving to Goma. And then we, when things become hard, because we had, an, we had a house, we sold the house in Bukavu and then we moved to Goma. And then the volcano burned everything. <laughs> it wasn't really easy. So the things that people are experiencing here right now, being refugees, looking for help, looking for all those kind of things. I also go through that. So when the volcano erupted in 2021, I was like, this is the time to tell my own story because people people came to this country and tell the story of, of, of this situation and there was no really Congolese that could tell that story because also the technology wasn't there. Like if you have a camera, it was really a, a big thing. So I got an opportunity to talk about the the volcano, which it put me, uh, which it was really interesting because I went through that and I knew what I, I was looking for. I knew I knew how the person, so I put myself in people's shoes and tell the story, which I feel like it was different from what someone from outside could could tell. And we went in 2005, we also had a conflict with, with um, I don't know if you know the rebel called Laura Kunda. He was he was actually part of the he was like the chief leader of the rebels who also created a, a big conflict that made that killed so many people here that be, brought so many war uh violence and and little kid being raped and it was i mean when i remember uh as like looking for help which we didn't find but we had to run it's it's really those story really put me i don't know they they can't leave me but what what i can do is to maybe do uh work on things that work on ideas that will will bring hope or change uh people's life because I know I, I went through that. I wouldn't do a, a crazy caption or a crazy picture because, because I know how it feels when people are going through these kind of things. I think that's, that's what 
can make uh, a difference between working on something when you experience the things. Yeah. So if I can understand you better, I would say one of the attributes you have is respect. You respect the people you're taking out photos because you know exactly what it feels like to be in that situation. Yes, the dignity is really important uh, when it comes to create a story. It's okay to say what is true because in documentary, it's good to, to say what is happening. If the story uh, is not okay, I'm not gonna put flowers on it, but f what is true is uh, it won't be the same with someone who just come from outside and creates the, the story, yeah. So you clearly have experience with dealing with people with trauma because you work in environments that, that where people have traumatic lives. How do you approach or communicate people that are experiencing or going through such kind of trauma? So for me, first of all, when I'm... I'm documenting about something. I don't go directly to these people and start taking photos, no. They are human beings. So when a company, for example, like UNICEF or Doctors uh, Without Borders, when they, when they send me to these places to take photos, I have a strategy. I don't just go there and do what they, they, they do in, on the field and then go back and say, here is the content. No, I actually have a plan where I act, I sit with people even for for many days if we have much time, or if it's small time, I sit with them for two days if I will need, if I will have a week, and talk to these people every day to listen to them, to hear the stories. I mean, to be to be inside of what they are doing so that I can be able to create a to create a better story, a true story and a story that that still have some dignity in it. Not just to take photos because someone is suffering, then to show a negative part of, of what is happening. There are people who have st uh, stories which are also positive, even if they're experiencing bad situations, they are also uh, have this positive story where, where for example, you see, um, you see like this situation that is happening in Goma right now, there are so many refugees that came here because of war. And there are actually some people who are doing their best they are not just staying inside of their tents they are actually making bettering uh, other people's life inside those community there are others who are selling something not begging but they are selling something to take care of their their children or family you see parents they are like okay this uh, these things happen but we need to be stronger because because if we stay ourselves just like that, uh, we are not gonna get our help. We need to help ourselves. You see, parents are doing their best to do something for their family. For me, I will relate that story as what I'm seeing and what I'm what they are doing for for making things happen. Of course, there are other people who are not. Uh, who are not doing anything, they are crying every day and waiting for help. But there are other people who are actually trying their best. So inside the story, there are story of people, I can say, who are, who are showing a bad story, but there is a way I do that, that take um, those photos with dignity but also when it comes to story, I, I really take my time to sit with my subject and to discuss with them more about their life, even to do small stories, to exchange ideas. And then it's come up like we know each other for a very long time. And you see, they are very happy. They are comfortable to share with me ideas. It's not like um, I'm just coming there and take people's photo in that, that's all, no. 
he really for me it means a lot behind it during this process when you talk to the people uh, do you also tell them about how you intend to use the you use images? the pictures yes so okay. i i usually have the consent form when it comes to um when it comes to documentary there is a place where i go that is very specific and where people will want especially when it comes to international organizations they usually have a place where they don't send us to just take photos just for taking they usually give us what they need so for me uh for them they wouldn't care for example about consent form but I usually I usually create a consent form for myself when it comes to projects because I know uh, this person would love um, would love to know why are why are we taking these photos? Mm -hmm. Are we getting money from these photos? These people need to understand what they are doing. So I make some consent form and I translate them in their language. Oh, I ask for help for people who speak the language and then I go with them and they will read or someone near when they don't know how to read, someone will read for, for them and uh, they will know why they are doing it and they will sign a paper for it. Or, um, or... I want to ask you another question. Uh -huh. do, you, do you find yourself sometimes in a conflict because you have a very politically unstable environment and then you have your clients sometimes ngos um, or, or sometimes media outlets and then you have the people on the ground and some and do you find that sometimes you need to maybe tell a story that is in line with what the client wants or sometimes you are a bit to tell a story because of the political tension? Do you feel those kind of tensions at play in your work? Usually, so for me, the experience that happened is, is a bit different. Where uh, I went, they sent me to do photos for an organization, an international organization. And then uh, when I get on the field, uh, other people had what they were doing, but them they didn't have they didn't have results. Like for example, they may get found, but they don't do anything. Uh, so me as someone who needs to create content for them, I become in the middle of a situation where I, I'm asking myself, what am I doing right now? So in those situations, uh, I really, it, it really confused me because uh, they will, I will get back to them and they will say, okay, you didn't work. But for me, I wouldn't give what, what is not true. I'm not, I'm not going to go on the field and give um, what I don't see. So uh, it's happened to me once and they, they feel like they couldn't help me because I didn't do the work. But as I said, I can't. I can't say they gave you ten millions of dollars to for to make this project happen. But I'm not seeing anything. The, normally, a documentary you need to say the truth. So I, it, yes. it really confused me, and I couldn't do the work. And it's and, your reputation on the line as well. Yeah. And uh, and when it comes to conflicts, uh, usually, usually uh, they don't they don't actually cares about you. You do you do the story. If it's happened, you die. And I don't I don't think really they will they will care about if you die or if you you die or not. Uh, for sure, uh, when uh, most of the the most of the mission here above about creating content, they usually dangerous. You can get killed anytime. 
but uh when when signing an organization and they say that um you are at your own especially when you are a freelance uh if you die you die then it wasn't your your like day and nothing will happen actually do you ever feel concerned for your for your life when you are when you are publishing photos and do you feel worried that you're going to get into trouble so um normally normally that's one i i actually should because we live in a country where you don't know you don't know what will happen when you go in town so everyone could be a soldier you don't know and and now people and the government is now on the new on the internet a lot right now they they now can check internet and for sure when for example um i was documenting this story of monisco and i saw monisco killing people with my eyes and that was one of the the like proof to show that actually they are killing people but on the news they they say that they are not and they confirm it to the world and nothing happened and then you see when it comes to the news um they also keep their truth because you know un is is one of the organization that is running the world so they also couldn't couldn't put that on the internet when uh, when when they saw this news but but as a photographer i saw them because i was near them which was a bit dangerous i was near them and um i saw them killing uh, these uh, protesters with real guns and it wasn't um it wasn't for me it scared me because uh, that's why when when they share the news they they just say uh, one of our reporters saw uh, what happened they didn't say my name because um because it could put me in danger i think yes. yeah yes yeah your protection is important as well so that's also another key aspect for ethical storytelling to be able to protect people with with their stories yeah yeah if you had resources if you had resources what would you do differently is there anything you would do differently if i had resources i would mm -hmm. create i would create an organization for people to from congo who would help me with this idea of changing the narrative and creating the story in a different way that's what i would do and i really dream big to make that happen and i i am working on making people together because i know uh, some of the people who are doing this job who can actually love to be part of this idea and i think sooner or later um the story will change on the internet on google and when you tap congo it won't just be about war there will be a diversity of art within different people who will learn more about uh these skills about uh copyright about how to protect themselves about uh, doing doing picture how to be safe i really would love to make that happen that's that's actually one of my dream yeah i would like to see this dream happen too Thank it's you. a really good dream to have and and you're doing it you're working towards it yeah i'm doing it slowly <laughs> yes but at least you started step by step yeah exactly okay uh michelle i want to thank you for your time and uh really you're an absolute inspiration <clears throat> and um we're going to talk later more about the project 
and um, yeah, I'm going to stop recording now. Okay. Okay. So, um,